I hope this video helps. Please check out my playlist, Evidence for Christianity, Evidence for the Bible, End Times, and the Book of Revelation. I'll leave links in the description for all four. Enjoy. I got this LG Plasma TV. It's a 60P A6500-UG model number. The owner said that it randomly shuts off uh, while it's on. It will come back on, but it just randomly shuts off. So let's see. So far, this is the only issue I've been able to find where it just blinks off and on. But it's only with the HDMI input. So let's take apart the uh, TV and see what's going on inside there. So here's the back of the TV. Here's all how all the screws came out. Uh, you got all these thin thread screws for all uh, in the middle. They're the same. There's one that's close to the outside that's near all the audio video. And then all your outside screws. So all the outside screws and the one near the audio video is the same. Then you got your four uh, <clears throat> bolts for the base so let's go ahead and uh, pull the back cover off uh, the edges of this cover are pretty sharp so just be mindful of that and it's snagging on something here oh there's a screw right in the middle of the video here the component in so make sure make sure not to forget that so there's a screw I missed on the audio video and it's the same as the outside screws uh, now with all the screws out, let's go ahead and remove the back cover. Just, oh, there we go. And just slipped and fell down. Let's see what we got back here. All right. It's a bunch of dusty components. It sure is. So you want to be careful because some of these capacitors can hold on to a very high voltage and shock you. Um... But we'll look around and see if there's anything that could possibly be causing our flickering issue with the audio video board there. So just doing a quick visual, I did not find any bulging capacitors. Uh, of course, a lot of components over here look like they get hot, but that's not unusual for a plasma TV. And um, what I'm assuming is the only thing I can find are uh, a bunch of dirty components. There's a bunch of dirty boards and possibly some uh, dust has collected on a component that's causing an intermittent short that's creating our issue. Uh, doesn't look like you actually need to remove the base. I went ahead and put the base and the screws back on so I can get it on a little roller uh, and move it around safer to the garage. So I can blow it out. Got my compressed air. Got the TV outside. And let's blow. So I got everything dusted off. Now I just want to make sure all the connectors are uh, kind of... Connected. Yeah, got a good connection. So this one has couple tabs on top that you got to pinch together in order to get out get your, cut, get your fingernails under it it'd be easier with two hands but I gotta hold the camera so just unplug and plug it back in you can do it a couple times if you want if you think that might help this one's got a tab on top that you squeeze and then this one's got tab over here you got to get a thumbnail on and pinch and to be real honest I don't think this one needs to be messed with that is a video plug to go to your video processor here but uh, if you wanted to I guess you could Go ahead and peel back this extremely sticky tape that leaves the residue. And then, yeah, you just gotta get a fingernail underneath that brown part and flip it up. There we go. Then you can pull it out and we'll put it back in. And then close it up. You 
got to make sure you get it in all the way also. All right, that's in all the way. And then just flip down your, your flap. Good. And we'll put the tape back on. So that should do it. Let's uh, plug everything in, see if it works. So just uh, getting the dust off it did not fix our flashing issue. I mean, it's working right now, but as soon as I go to the home screen there, it's, uh, it's going to start saying no signal and flashing. So just a note, I was started taking the screws out of this board here, and these two were not even finger tight. And then I started messing with these two, and they were the same. They were all four loose. So I'm assuming that is our problem, because we're not getting a solid ground to this logic board. And when you don't get a solid ground on a logic board, uh, it just screws with the logic. So uh, all the digital conversion for the... Uh, for the audio video, uh, it'll mess it up, get noise, and you don't get solid uh, ons and offs. But anyway, let's uh, let's see if that fixes it. Putting the tightening the screws up. So it's definitely a lot better. It has blinked a couple times. Um, I'm assuming maybe some dirt or something is on the ground connections for the board, uh, since the screws are so loose. So I'm gonna actually take the board off. Take that board off and then uh, clean the contact surface for the ground. That way it makes a solid ground, but it is definitely a lot better. I've only had it blink a couple times instead of strobing like it was. From where it should be making a connection, this one is really bad. There's some corrosion there. And some corrosion there. Right where it should be making a solid ground. So here's the board itself. And you can even see the corrosion on the spots where it should be grounded now that actually looks like it could be uh, some resin from the board uh, that could also just be some resin from the solder that they didn't clean up so there's definitely something uh, preventing this from having a solid ground onto the chassis so let's clean that up uh, I got some q-tips and some rubbing alcohol my isopropyl alcohol and uh, let's get to scrubbing so all these surfaces in the corners where the screws go scrub them really good and probably wouldn't hurt if you got a soldering iron to go ahead and touch each of these little spots those four holes touch them up with a little bit of solder and then clean it off real good so I'm going to scrub them real hard here. Wiped off of this place where it should be making a solid ground. And then do the same to the circuit board. So after scrubbing on it real good with the Q-tips, it was pretty obvious that it's either some resin from the board or old solder resin that they didn't clean off uh, that's in between these grounding pads uh i it really wasn't coming off the q-tips that great so i got a toothpick and really scrubbed on it and you know, dipped it in alcohol and really scrubbed down on the pads to get that uh, resin off of there and then <clears throat> i highly recommend doing the the uh, soldering iron and putting a little bit of solder on each pad if you can I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to see if maybe this cleaning worked and then leave it as is. If I have any more issues, then I know where my problem is and I'll go ahead and put the solder on. But let's put the board back in. So make sure you're cleaning off the correct standoffs, these four here. I was cleaning on these two up here, but uh, those are not it. But anyway, make sure you get the correct standoffs. I'm going to go through and tighten up every screw I can get my hands on because I was tightening up the power supply ones also and they're a little loose. 
and then we'll put the board back in and try it. All right, so after going through and hand tightening all the screws, I found several that were loose on this board and this board over here also. Um, and then, of course, the worst of all was this one. But I'm assuming the ones on here were due to it getting hot and cold and hot and cold. And then the screws just, you know, working their way loose from the expansion and contraction uh, from the changing of temperatures. So grounding is a must have for uh, logic circuits. So that's why I kind of thought that that might be the issue when I just saw the flickering. Let's try it. Everything's back together and clean and tight. There it is. So far we've been playing it and no blinking. So we'll play it for another hour or more. See if there's any blinking. But uh, so far so good. Everything looks perfect. So we've been crafting it up for at least an hour. Go ahead and go to the home screen, buddy. Alright. And this is where it was flickering really, really bad. And I haven't seen a single flicker since we've done the cleaning and the tightening of all the screws. So it's working perfect. Uh, I think we have a positive fix. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. If you want to connect with me, I have a public group called Share Your Trade on MeWe. I'll leave that link in the description. Thanks for watching.